What is up, YouTube fans? And Bingbox fans, I suppose. Uh, welcome to Splinter Cell Blacklist. This is a Let's Demo, not a Let's Play, but I'm going to play a little bit for you guys anyway. So, as for usual, when I do these demos, we're going to go into our video settings first and foremost. Okay, so we're going to go into, well, first let's go into UI settings. And this is not much happening here. This is basic stuff that I usually turn on. So, nothing to turn on in terms of graphics here. And in video settings, we're going to go to advanced options because, uh, we're, well, first we're going to put the graphics quality at ultra, then full screen, 1920 by 1080, and refresh rate is standard at 60 hertz and the monitor aspect ratio at 16 to 9. Okay, so it goes from low, medium, high to ultra. Full screen, as per usual, at the 1920 by 1080. And uh, we're going to go into our advanced options, just to show you guys a bunch of the things that we can do with these settings. So by default, ultra will put all your stuff on like this, except for a few things which I've already changed. Okay, so first, we have texture quality at ultra, shadow quality at ultra, parallax is on, tessellation is on. Tessellation is very important in this game because they do have a lot of really deep textures, a lot of 3D textures that are on the character models, and especially on Sam Fisher. Really, really cool stuff on his outfit. Texture filtering, definitely at 16 times. This computer can handle it, so do it. It looks really good in this game. Okay, V-Sync is on, hate screen tearing, you guys know that. And then we're going to put our dynamic ambient occlusion at field AO and HBAO plus. Okay. On uh, NVIDIA's website, actually, you can actually find a bunch of these settings and what they mean and all that stuff, which is really great because it doesn't explain in the game. But for our purposes here, we're going to go to full field AO and HBAO plus. HBAO again is the NVIDIA variant. This was made pretty much directly for NVIDIA. So... And then you'll see that in just a second, actually, um, because in the anti-aliasing, we have a bunch of bunch of options, just like any other game. We have we even have SSAA two times two, and then rotated grid as well. MSAA two, uh, four, eight, whatever. And then there's TXAA two times. And now TXAA again is the NVIDIA variant of the MSAA plus some of NVIDIA's other coding for it. First of all, we're going to go into FXAA, just like we did with Batman, actually, in the previous video, and show you guys that this game runs super smoothly on FXAA. It can, you can probably get pretty much full-on 60 frames per second, if not 55 to 60 on average. There are some times when the frame rate will dip, but for purposes, testing purposes right now, if you guys want full 60 frames per second, I would suggest going with FXAA. Now, again, like I've mentioned in other videos, that not everyone likes FXAA because uh, it does smudge things a little bit. It kind of gives it a blur that people don't like because it is a full screen uh, anti-aliasing. It doesn't just do the edges like MSAA does. SSA, uh, SSAA is even more terrible because then you're just losing a lot of power and for no reason, really. That's probably the oldest method that people could be using. So... For my suggestion right now, we're running at FXAA, and I gotta say, I've played the full game on Xbox 360, and this looks awesome on the computer. It really looks really, really great. Especially looking at the texture on uh, Sam's clothing, the little bumps, the just the little details that they really put into this game are, it's just incredible. If you look on his arm, you can see the uh, texture filtering there and the tessellation, the little dots are just just a little more 3D than you would find on the Xbox, which are probably flatter. A little thing to note too, my, uh, my gamma is, my gamma correction is on the suggested setting where it says barely visible, move this slider until this picture or whatever is barely visible. It's set on the right setting, but it seems that on the computer, I don't know if it's just my TV or something at home, but on the computer, it's brighter. The The Paladin and other things are brighter, and the contrast is better on the computer. Hey, hey Sam, we're uh, pretty much good to go here. Just got to overclock a couple of components. The lighting looks great. Uh, you guys know if you guys play Splinter Cell, if you're interested in Splinter Cell, lighting is very crucial in these games, and the lighting is it's really second to none. It's really fantastic. 
most of our equipment and if we've got enough cash and the right supplies, then I can test out some sick mods for your gear. Sounds like I'm in good hands. You know it. Hey, you need anything right now? Yeah. Might want to look into a helmet. Yeah. Thanks. Nice work, Charlie. Thanks. I'm just walking around the Paladin here just to show you guys some of the detail that they really just put in this game. I mean, Tom Clancy games have always been known, especially for their gear, the detail on their gear. It's This game is it's just incredible. I mean, in terms of graphics, this is definitely the best of the series. Uh, Double Agent did look really good too. But in my opinion, there's a lot of detail, especially in the PC version, that you just don't necessarily find in the previous versions. Now this is the first mission, just to show you guys some gameplay. I'm going to be doing a few missions and this video is going to be pretty long so I'm not going to be talking through the whole thing of it. I just want you guys to experience different features of the game that you may not notice in some parts of the game and you will notice in other parts and some of the textures and the features. Uh, the water looks really great when you're stepping in water and you'll see more of the water effects later on. But right here, uh, the game looks really fantastic there's a lot of detail happening right now and again this is on the FXAA so the the frame rates are still pretty high right now and they do dip you don't really have to worry about that and this is one of those games that you don't have to worry so much about your frame rate being at perfect 60 I mean other old games like on Xbox 360 they run at 30 frames per second you guys didn't even realize it I mean yes the graphics weren't as good but they're running at 30 frames per second a lot of people especially on PC, are really pushing for the 60 frames per second or higher, as high as possible, and I can understand that for Battlefield. Uh, but for certain games, you don't have to set everything on Ultra, and that's the message I'm trying to get to you guys that are looking into getting this computer. Yes, this can handle things on Ultra, but it won't give you 60 frames per second, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, this game does not need, does not need, I'll repeat that again, to be run at 60 frames per second, because this is mostly... A slower game. If you're playing Splinter Cell correctly, you're going to be sneaking around, you're going to be methodical, and you're going to be lurking the shadows very slowly and following and pursuing your targets very slowly if you do happen to have targets. Just look at the detail on his suit and everything. It just looks, this is like Sam Fisher right here, you know? Even the lens flare on his little lights on his uh, on his pack on his suit or whatever look better than way better than the Xbox version. Check out the light on this. Look at the detail on the walls, on the brick there. Now, this is, again, also recording. So, I mean, I'm not going to blame the recording program for my loss in frame rates, but it does, every time I record something, usually drop one or two frames. Usually. Especially for a high-intensity game like this. Now, again, that's not really an excuse. I mean, it's only dropping one or two, so it's not huge, but it does contribute to some of the lag here that you see. And also this is rendered through video after gameplay, so I don't even remember if I had some of this lag when I was playing. It might have just been rendered that way. Now, like I said, for those of you who are playing Splinter Cell, usually you're probably trying to sneak around, although it does encourage other play styles like Panther and Assault. But for me, on this setting right now, I'm playing on Perfectionist, so I'm going full stealth, and I'm moving slowly. I'm thinking out my moves, you know, and 
for the most part, the camera twisting around everything is not going to affect your gameplay. I mean, even if it does twitch a little bit, it's not going to be terrible. I think his hallway looks great in this scene as well. Now here I just want to show you uh, the settings that I changed it to and this is what I was talking about here with the TXAA two times. I changed it to this for this part of the mission, the second part of the mission and I think it really does look better. It does make some of the textures and, and the surfaces look much cleaner instead of smoothed out and, and, and rubbed over a little bit. I mean it's not terrible, no, don't get me wrong, if you want the frames and you want a really good looking game and you don't want those jagged edges, FXAA is perfectly capable. Do not get me wrong. But TXAA I think just looks a little bit better. Now again, I want to reinstate that you don't have to push it to TXAA times 4. TXAA 2 times 2 is plenty enough for this laptop. Just check out the shadows and the movement of the lighting here and the lens flare. All of these little things that just contribute to how good this game really looks. Now I do want to reinstate that this is on TXAA so therefore the frame rates are going to drop. You are using MSAA and that does tend to have a performance hit on your computer. But again for me it's not going to be terrible and keeping these frames at you know 45 to 50, sometimes even 60 indoors, it's perfect for me. It's really good. To me, if you're not dipping below, usually you don't dip below 40. Sometimes there are times where it will dip maybe, you know, to 38 or something like that, but for the most part, it's not going to dip majorly. But you will see in some scenes when there's a lot of water and a lot of little things moving, I mean, water is a hard thing to render, especially you want if you want those right edges, you know. Uh, you'll see in a later scene that it is going to be pretty taxing in some in some heavier weather effect areas. Again, it's it's still going to stay above 30, which is what you want for gameplay. It's going to stay above 30, and it's going to be perfectly playable, I promise. Then we're just going to move back over here just to give you a small, quick pan of the area and of the graphics in the surrounding area right here. Now here we're going to show uh, a different part of, I think, this is the second level, I do believe, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And uh, we're going to just do some climbing, just to show you guys some of the water effects, those birds flying around, the grass effects, the, the rock textures. This is mainly for that purpose. I mean, Tomb Raider was a huge game for this kind of stuff, and that's probably why I wanted to show you guys this, was just to show you that all those Tomb Raider-like sequences and stuff. I don't have Tomb Raider on PC, unfortunately, but I can assure you that it's probably going to look on its on its best, probably. I, I'm, I'm going to assume. That is without the uh, crazy hair texture feature that they added on. As you can see, his movements are really fluid and smooth. 
No problems here. Sam, I'm seeing movement above you. I'm not sure why the the in-game voices are kind of cut off. I'm not really sure why. This tends to happen a lot when I'm recording, so I apologize for that. As I said, the, when you're hiding in the dark and you're sneaking around, the game looks its best. Like with all the shadows and everything and showing you the differences between the darkness and the light, it just really looks good. Now here is the final part that I'm going to show you guys when he's walking through the water. I'm going to stop for you guys just to show you. The water looks fantastic, but your computer does take a performance hit. I mean, we're looking at the low, low 40s, high 30s maybe, uh, but the water in this game looks fantastic. It looks way better than the Xbox version, and it just looks really smooth and really good. And I would definitely keep these uh, video settings on just for this kind of this atmosphere. I think it just looks incredible. All right, so I'm going to just run this video out just a little bit longer. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for being supportive and giving me suggestions on my channel. Please, please, please write some more comments and just tell me what you guys want to see and what you guys don't want to see or whatever. And uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, do whatever, but just keep supporting and tell your friends about it if they're looking to get a laptop or whatever. And uh, this is Bingbox, and I'll see you guys next time.